G'day, how are you doing? Hopefully you're doing very well, keeping healthy and safe. I'm doing pretty sweet on this side of the desk. Today we're going to have a look into this Dell XPS 8960. It's a desktop computer, as you can see, it's a mini tower. And just because it does have this very, what I call, very subtle and stealthy look to it, you could use this for business applications. Now it does have a discrete graphics, which is actually good for a lot of for gaming as well as some of your professional work. Now, we are going to have look at to the behavior of the performance we also have a look at internals and some of the features of this xps the dell xps 8960 runs off the 13th gen intel core now you can get anywhere between an i5 all the way up to an i9 now as for the memory wise it has a maximum capacity of 64 gigs now that's over two dim slots and with the graphics now this will also can go very configurable anyway from an amd Radon RX 6500 XT. Can it go all the way up to uh, 6900 XT? Now, as for the G4 side, you can get anywhere between the RTX 3050 and can go all the way up to a 4090. Now, there is a few different power configurations, and this will also depend on the graphics card you decide to opt within but there are free power ratings so you can get a 40 60 watts one there's also a 750 watt version and also a thousand watt now that will be pairing according to the graphics you decide to put in it we'll start off looking at the ports now you get your usual nice selection of ports at the back of a computer now this is not unusual for any desktop mini tower computer as that would be usb type a ports and usb type c and also you get your ethernet and also the display port it's nice to see that dell have actually put a little bit more focus on the front as you get three usb type a ports and a usb type c port and also the audio combo jack and what i really like about it is having an sd card reader now comes an interesting topic which is the fair noise now while i was actually working on the computer and also testing the computer most of the time when it's idle or doing average use which is pretty much surfing web doing office productivity work it pretty much measured in a maximum of 35 decibel now that is the same as the ambient room noise which is also measured in that 35 decibel so the fans are moving but it's just that sound so i do feel a little bit of air movement at the back but once you put a lot of load on the computer it will actually spike the actual speed of the fans to a maximum of 50 decibels. Now, it only stays for 50 decibels for maybe about one to two seconds. Then after that, it will calm itself down very quickly to a consistent 38 decibels. And it pretty much just stays very consistent at 38 decibels. It's got higher or lower until it finishes its task. Now, this is also seen in line with my long duration test of the performance of the processor. You actually see that very consistent and the fan noise is very consistent at 38 decibels. Now this is also the same while you're actually playing games. While you're loading the game, you'll see a quick spike up of the fan, which is the system fan, and that will go up to 50 decibels. And after about a second or two, it will actually back down to about 38 decibels and stays consistent. Now this is even duration of even the title screen or while you're actually playing the game in game for a long duration it stays pretty much at 38 decibels which is actually means that actual graphics is also very quiet on the 3070 so this computer most of the time runs a very very quiet let's have a quick look at the internals and what options there are in the xps 8960 now, first off, just to give you an orientation of this computer, this is the front of the computer, this is the rear of the computer. Now, in the middle, of course, is the processor fan, and this is an air-cooled solution. So we've got a system fan right in the middle here, which is sandwiched between this massive heat sink. And of course, the airflow will travel, hopefully travel this way. And we actually have the graphics card, of course, down here, which is the RTX 3070. Now, you will see there is also a stability, just a slot here. Just now, this little plastic thing, you can actually take this thing out. So I'll just matter of taking that and just move it. And again, it's just giving it a little bit of stability so it doesn't put so much weight and then pull the card. It's nice to see they'll do this here. And I see that's plenty done in a fair number of the Dell desktop computers. Now we do have a system fan in the front. And we'll have a system fan at the back. And again, the airflow should hopefully roll from, that's the airflow direction. Now with the 
graphics card. Now this one is an eight pin and there's, I can see there's a spare six pin here. So just be aware if you're gonna upgrade the graphics card maybe to a 3080, that does have that configuration. I don't think I've seen many that is in that configuration, but you might be able to find out. Uh, if you do need two eight pins and eight pins, then this, the power supply under here is not unable to supply the two eight pins here. So you may have to split one. Now we actually have the power supply located at the bottom here. And then just looking at the system board or the motherboard, now I can see that this is the Bluetooth Wi-Fi module right there. And then we've got the primary slot of M.2 storage and this is PCIe 4. Now we also have a second slot for M.2. Now this, both of them can support the 2280 format NVMe drives. And then we've also got two DIMM slots for your memory or RAM. Overall, nice clean design. Now we also have uh, two caddies for your hard drives, your old school spin hard drives. And I can see there is three SATA headers. Let's have a look at the performance of the processor in a high low task for over long duration of time. Now this XPS 8960 is configured with an i9 13900K processor and Intel reports that the maximum total boost on the performance cores of this processor is 5.4 GHz. And the efficiency cores has a maximum total boost of 4.3 GHz. Now it does have a base clock speed of 3 GHz for the performance cores and efficiency cores is 2.2 GHz. So we want to see above, I would say, 3 GHz. Now I've got this computer running on a high load, so I've pretty much 100% load on the processor. We've got quite a lot of load, nearly 100% on the memory or RAM, and we also got a lot of load on the storage and also on the discrete graphics as well. Now this has been going for about three and a half hours, and I can see the speed of the processor is ranging anywhere between 3.4 to about 3.75 gigahertz. Mostly around about 3.7 gigahertz is where I'm seeing it, and it's pretty, what I would say, close to stable at that sort of speed. It does dip down a little bit, but most of the time it is at 3.7 gigahertz. And I can see that actual temperatures of the processor is anywhere between 73 to about 75 degrees Celsius. Now it's not making quite a bit of noise at all. I don't really hear it. Looking at these temperatures, we've got quite a lot of headroom above. So you can overclock this if you want, or really you can improve the performance as this is just in the stock configuration without any configuring it anymore. But it's doing pretty good and it's very silent at the moment with even with this amount of load. Now we're just gonna have a quick look at the performance of the processor and how it behaves. Now I'm just gonna do a single core task, so we should actually hit some high clock speeds here. So I'm just gonna start this off, and this will start off. I can see it goes up to about 4.6 gigahertz, and then we got to 5.2 gigahertz, 5.3 gigahertz was high as it managed to pull off. And then it is staying at around about 5.2. Uh, I would say that's still about 5.2. It's just going up and down there. 5.1, 5.2. So looking at 5.2 to 5.3. So I would say an average of about 5.2 gigahertz here for the single core task. Now I did that quite quick. Now I'm just going to stop this here. As we can see, that's probably going to hold this clock speed around about 5.2 here. Now I'm just gonna stop this and we're gonna do for multi-core again. So I'm just gonna move this around here. Now I'm gonna start this off. Normally you would probably rest this, but I'm not gonna rest this. I'm just gonna push it straight through to the multi-core and we'll see how that runs. So 4.5 here, 4.3 gigahertz for multi-core, 4.3 gigahertz, 4.2. Now I do hear the processor fan spin quite high up now so it is really going at 3.8 3.6 here so there we go it's now dropped down it just hit its thermal limit and our fans actually gone way back down and i'd actually don't hear fan anymore but yeah you did see that pretty much this does run very quick as you can see to finish the task very quick in multi-core uh, but we it looks like we did hit the thermal limit very quickly uh, probably i would say about the 15 to 20 second mark, you'll hear it, see it hit that. I did hear the fan really come 
um, kick in right there um, for that. So that's just to give you an idea of actual processing behavior. Here's the results of the benchmarks performed on the XPS 8960. Here's the results for Passmark, Citibench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Geekbench, Crystal Disk Mark, Procon Office, Procon Photo Edit, Procon Video Edit, Procon AI Machine Learning, Pugin Photoshop, Pugin Lightroom, Pugin Premiere Pro, Pugin After Effects, Pugin DaVinci Resolve, Blender, Burmark, Luxmark, Octane Bench, Eugene Engine, and Spec View Pref. And some gaming benchmarks like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry 6, Cyberpunk 2077, and F1 2022. Having tested and also spent a bit of time with this Dell XPS 8960, go say I do love the selection of ports, especially the ports in the front. I love having seen the actual SD card reader in the front, really great for creators like myself. Now, as for the performance, it actually is a very decent performance. Now, it could be improved, and that is really this computer is what I say runs very silent. So this and also the stealthy look of this or subtle look of it is very nice for a business computer. Now because of the subtleness and maybe because of how quiet this computer mostly runs at, it's also a double-edged sword because I could not find any software to actually able to customize the fan and you can see from my thermal test and also the performance curves that the fan does go up very quickly and it comes back down and then the pretty much the performance especially in this i9 it does get capital throttled and it's just for the sake of quietness now it'd be nice to actually see uh, the some sort of software you, you can customize the fan speeds or even just put it into a high speed performance mode just so it can actually unlock that to actually get some better performance out of the processor especially in the i9 and i like to see whether it comes up with the i7 as this is just only the i9 but just like the desktop it would be nice to see from the laptops where you actually can customize like the alienware command center or even the power management from the xps laptops or the latitude laptops where you can actually change the fan speed mode to high performance so it'd be nice to see that and i did have a quick check even in my dell software it did not have that so this is one of the things i like to see dell improve so you can actually customize the fans just to able to bump up the speed of the performance of you can just unlock this low with the top end cap of that but also this is a great desktop computer now i hope you find this video informative and enjoy it. if you did in the support my channel smash that like button for me share this video it does help me out and as always imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting and i'll see you next video